Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. In this video, I am going to be taking a look at the Wargames Atlantic's Deathfields Einherjar. Einherjar? Dwarfs. Space dwarfs. Basically squats. Yeah, they're back. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Ollie. If you're new here, please do make sure you click that subscribe button for more videos to come or check out the links below if you wish to support the channel in any other way. So what do we have here? Well, you get 24 space dwarves in each set. They come with enough equipment to give you flamers, plasmas, grenade launchers, shotguns, and a little hand axe for your combat weapons as well. I would use these for my Imperial Guard, that's how they're gonna work. And I think the weapons are made perfectly to do so. I thought I'd put a few together to show you guys just how they look. Now, a disclaimer here, I am an Eldar and Elf fan, so the idea of painting dwarves horrifies me, but I'm putting myself through the torture to show you guys how they are. The models themselves go together quite easily. There are a few things. This is a little fur bracket shoulder pad thing that goes over the back of your model. It doesn't sit perfectly depending on which head you have. So do be aware when you're doing these, you need to clip a little bit of space off the sides to make them work. But other than that, they went together really well, quite easily. Most of the guns and arms match up nicely. So you won't really have much of a problem. I ended up trimming the front corners of the fur just to let it sit a bit better. And this is what two sprues of models look like. You get three models per sprue, so you do get a lot of special weapons, more than you need to fit your troops out. They look really nice. They are quite short. They are half the height of a space marine, of a, uh, an Indomitus space marine. So they're perfect for your dwarves and they all come with beards. Excellent. Now, of course, I'm not gonna leave you just there. I am going to paint these models to a nice battle ready standard to show you just what you can do. I'll also be trying out my brand new airbrush sent to me by the ladies and gents at the Airbrush Company. This is a Spa Max. It's nothing too expensive, nothing too fancy, but it is an upgrade from my previous one. So very excited. I'll be using the Vallejo Surface Primer just to put some blacks down on these models and protect them. I'm not gonna go for anything super fancy here. That really isn't the plan. My main plan is to get these to a good standard as quickly as I possibly can, because as an Imperial Guard player, you do need a lot of troops. I'm hoping the fact these guys are only half the size of normal humans, I might be able to do this quite quickly. So a splash of thinner in there, a bit of the black, mix it up until it's a nice milky kind of texture and then just spray it on. Set your PSI, the air pressure to the correct number. I'm guessing somewhere around 25 is normally a nice place to be, 18 to 25. Depends on what you're doing. I'm doing some base coating. I want this on, get it on nice and done. Right, enough about the airbrush itself, back to the models. A nice thin coat here. You could do this with rattle cans as well, of course. You can do it with the Games Workshop ones. You can even paint this on. Make the model all black all over, whatever color you want to go for. You can also obviously do wraith bone white, but I do all six models here in black. I know it's not that easy to see the detail right now. So what I'm gonna do for you is I'm going to do a heavy white xenophil. Just using the Vallejo white, I'm gonna spray this on at about a 45 degree angle to show you all of the details on the model. I'm not actually gonna paint these ones gray. I always end up painting gray. So I'm gonna try something a bit different, a bit more standard Cadian shock troop colors. That's how it looks now. White, it looks a bit frosty actually, but you can see there's nice detail in the beard. There's lovely detail on the armor, the clothes. Everything's very well defined and actually very easy to paint. Having had a good look through the Imperial Guard color section, I settled on using something brown. So I went for Rhinox hide. I sprayed this all over the models as a base coat. Again, you could paint this on. And this is the last time I use the airbrush here just because the models are quite small. The detail is quite well defined. Anyway, you don't really need to do much more. That's them, Rhinox hide brown. I'm now gonna only start doing one or two models. The first one, I'm gonna do the armor in Lauren Forest. This is a nice neutrally green, an opposite color to the brown. Looks really good on the model. Pretty much your classic Cadian guard shock trooper, right? Green, brown, all that bony color. Painting the green on, the armor panels are really, really individualized, they're quite solid. I do a super stroke there and knock the model out of my hands. Try not to do that, just paint the model uh, as you would normally because the armor pieces are very well separated, so they're very easy to define. That's how he looks, just green and brown at this point. Not much more you really want to do to him until you start adding more details. There's some nice definition there around this dwarf's butt cheeks, lovely defined dwarf butt. Then the other model I'm gonna do in Zandri Dust. This gives me that khaki brown color, should again complement nicely with the very dark brown. 
kind of like an ivory. Give this a quick wash of Agrax or Reichland Flesh Seed if you're using the game's workshop paints. A quick edge highlight and you can be done. The fact is, playing Imperial Guard, you really do want to smash these models out. I have a whole ton of them sat there in a box that have been sat there for years and I just unpainted. So painting these mini small dudes is a great thing. Of course, you don't have to use them as Imperial Guard. You could write some self rules yourself to make them specific squat models, but the equipment, the armor, and the way they look really does lend themselves to playing as your Astra Militarum miniatures. Next up, it's on to all of the details. These are the metal weapons, the fur trims, the leg braces behind, the feet, the boots themselves, and the little pouches, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's definitely enough. They are really well-defined miniatures and very clear to see what you're painting as. Sometimes when I'm painting, I struggle to find exactly what bits should be what color, what bits belong to which other section, so like the shoes can get mixed up with socks or boots or trouser legs. So much like your Cadian Guard shock troopers, these guys probably have a very similar level of detail, just a little bit more defined. At this point, I don't actually want to admit it, but I'm kind of enjoying these miniatures. I could really see myself painting a full army of these very quickly to a good standard and have them battle ready in like a day. A 24 hour challenge with these would be so easy because they're just so small. Dwarves for the win, sort of. Uh, they do have some nice little goggles. Some of the models have bare faces, some have helmets. These guys here have little like goggles. So I kind of imagine them to be glowy visors, although you don't have to do it that way. You could obviously do these as straight sunglasses even if your dwarves are hanging out. Once I've done all the details, it's onto the basing. I'm using the Luke's APS and Geek Gaming base ready materials, the Fields of New Zealand and the Arid Grasslands. I'm gonna put some PVA glue, the base ready glue, all over the base of the model and then just dunk them in. This is a really, really fast and easy way to base your armies to a nice, effective standard. And that is how I painted my dude in green. Overall, probably took me less than half an hour to paint to that standard. There's no mega edge highlighting, but I'm really, really happy with how he turned out. And I hope this shows you the level of detail on these models. Nice, quick, simple paint job. If you want an army done, I would highly recommend these miniatures. For the khaki brown desert style model, I'm using the Luke's APS Geek Gaming base ready New Zealand style. Again, some fast drying base glue, dunk it in, tap it about, as simple as that. That is one model done. He's a flamethrower dude. He has some cool red glasses and a gray beard. There's lots of beards on these models if that is your kind of thing. Not much more to say. I'll leave with some more photos. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do remember to like, share, subscribe and hit the alarm bell below for more videos. Check out all the links from the description if you want to support the channel. There's links down there as to where to buy the models as well as my Patreon and my shop. So yeah, guys, thanks. I'll leave with a little height difference here. That is a Primaris dude, a normal Space Marine and your half-sized dwarves. Did I say dwarves? I mean squats. Squats are back. <laughs>